it's our first hunt of the year. And I'm gonna have to be honest with you. Oh, this is the only tree stand that we have up so far this year. You know, Adam Crummer is one of those guys where, you know, a lot like me, he gets on a specific animal and he's hyper-focused on that buck. It's not about just deer hunting and having a hundred stands out scattered all over the place. It's about focusing and targeting one specific animal and you might actually only have one or two tree stands for that animal trying to kill them early season when those deer are on strict feeding patterns and they're not really traveling the country yet like in November. It's all about the red moon evenings right on the edges of the food sources and that's what we got right here in early season. So here's the situation. You know, Adam's got a soybean field. Field's kind of drying up. He's kind of enhanced it a little bit with the Imperial Whitetail Oats. So the deer have got, you know, some greens in here. It's early October. Adam's been waiting for the red moon to hit in the evening. Perfect wind. This big 10 point's been showing up on camera and Adam knows it's time to move in for the kill. So it's a typical October evening. The does are starting to come out in the field and the deer have kind of switched with the beans drying up. They're not hyper-focused on the green leaves anymore. Now they're all about the protein, hammering the actual soybeans themselves, and it's not too long before Mr. Big shows up. So typical October behavior. These deer aren't really responding super aggressive to the calling right now. You know, Adam's given a couple grunts. That deer's heard it. He acknowledges the call, but he's just not super aggressive yet. He doesn't see another buck in the field, so he really hasn't responded and come right into the call. He's just kind of working his way out into the field, feeding and getting closer and closer, but he just hasn't given Adam a shot yet. So this buck is pretty content out in this field with the does feeding, but he is working his way closer and closer into that red zone for Adam. This buck is literally, you know, steps away from where Adam's comfortable enough to take a shot. Something happens, a doe back in the woods blows, the deer leave the field. It was a great encounter. Everything worked out. Adam got to see the, you know, the buckies after and it was just that close as luck would have it it didn't happen this night so obviously adam didn't get it done on his first encounter with this big 10 and things are changing the crops have come down you know these beans have been harvested so there's a little bit of food left in this field the oats are starting to mature the does are still in here and this is still kind of a, a red moon situation in later October where you're still focused on those red moon evenings right on the edges of the food source. Adam's waited for the red moon to come back around again, hoping to get another crack, another opportunity at this big 10. He's moved back into this field, got a good wind, red moon in the evening, but it's a new buck that shows up this time. Not every hunter is gonna be able to do this, you know, and pass up this great buck, but Adam knows his deer. You know, he knows by looking and studying this animal that it's not a mature buck. It's got a ton of potential, and this is what it's all about, is letting these mature animals get to their potential, and sometimes it's a tough pill to swallow, but Adam Crummer did it on this hunt. October's over with, the Big Ten is gone, missing in action. Crummer's basically going off 
last year's Intel. We had this big nine on the coverts last year in this particular area. He knows this animal well. He knows that this is the situation and the scenario where this buck could show up at any time. It's that time of the year. These big mature bucks are in that searching phase looking for those first does to come into heat. This is not your typical October red moon scenario even though the red moon is coming up here soon the peak activity times are hitting during the middle of the day right now crummer's in his stand early hoping that this big nine shows up just like he did last year So the peak activity time for this day is 1250. You know, we're only 20 minutes off that time and here's this buck moving middle of the day. Not when you would typically expect to see a big mature deer up on his feet moving during daylight, but that's exactly what this buck is doing. It's early November. These bucks are moving early. They're searching for those first does to come into heat and that's exactly what this buck is doing. He's moving from one chunk of cover to the next, and it's typical big buck behavior for early November. This is one of those scenarios where this buck might actually get past Adam, so he's gonna give just a few calls, just so this buck is curious enough to hang out and move just a little bit closer. I mean, he only needs about another 10 yards and this deer is in bow range. Just everything is intensified at this moment. Buck's on high alert. This is what it's all about, man. This is a great big 10 point frame. This deer's got everything. He's got the mass, the width, the tine height. I mean, this is a big mature buck and this is exactly why we're in the woods right here. You know, this is a great animal, deer of a lifetime for most guys. Real hats off to Adam. This was a buck that he was after last year. He was going off of last year's intel. He knew where he needed to be. He was waiting for that window of opportunity where the moon and the weather and the wind all lined up, put himself right in position to kill a buck of a lifetime. He's an Illinois resident. He's got another buck tag in his pocket. And right now it's all about time in the stand in November. And he's got to take full advantage of this window of opportunity he's got. I tell you, most guys might be really enjoying the moment from killing a deer like this, but you got to get right back out there. And that's exactly what Adam did the following morning. So Adam's hoping that he's going to get another look at this Big Ten from earlier in the season. Big cold front moving in and this next morning is one of those dreary, overcast, rainy, cooler November mornings where, you know, it just feels bucky out and Crummer's back in the stand ready for action. It's first thing in the morning, cracks the horns together and out of nowhere this deer comes charging in and next thing you know it buck is right at the base of Adam's stand. There's a lot going on in this situation. Adam's trying to self-film. He's called this deer in. It's at point blank range right now. At first glance, he thinks this might be the Big Ten, but after watching the deer for a few seconds, he notices it's got split G2s on both sides, a little bit narrower than the Big Ten. Not the same buck, but still a mature animal. This buck is actually, I mean, he's super aggressive, you know, charging in, the deer's on the move. He's actually gone through permanent shooting lane out into the field and moving off, and he's got to get this deer back in bow range. This is one of those situations where your reaction as a hunter has got to be second nature. This is your opportunity, you can't blow it. And this is exactly what Crummerin does. This buck is looking for something going on. Adam grabs his extinguisher call, slides it down to buck, 
gives a little directional grunt back behind him so this deer can't pinpoint him in the tree and that's all it takes. When you're trying to kill a big deer like this, it's tough enough. Trying to self-film takes it to a whole other level. This deer responds perfectly to the grunt, brings him back into bow range. Adam can't get the big camera on this buck. The buck comes into his one shooting lane, he's got the GoPro going, and it's game over. Ah. We just smoked another giant. Whew, what a year. Thank you, Lord. Things happen quick in November. A lot of action. This whole hunt is over as quickly as it started. Looking back on Adam's season, which was really kind of condensed right here into less than 24 hours, but there are some specific reasons why this all happened. Adam scouts, he knows his areas, he knows where he needs to be, and he waited for his window of opportunity. He's waiting for the right winds, the right weather, the right moon, and you get that window, you've got to go in and seize the moment, and that's exactly what he did. When you go back and watch these hunts, communication played a big role in it also, and polar opposites. One was very subtle, very minute when it came to the first buck responding, not real super aggressive, but just enough to pull that buck into bow range. And the next morning, complete opposite. This buck comes charging in, reacting to the rattling. A couple quick grunts on the extinguisher, this buck comes charging back in. And you really gotta be able to read the situation and react accordingly, and that's exactly what Adam did. Bow hunting is a game of peaks and valleys. You can go from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. Kermit had a tough year last year. He had a couple encounters in October. Easy to get frustrated over that, didn't get it done, but he's bounced back. You gotta stay focused, you gotta stay committed. You can't give up and look what happened. Inside of 20 hours, he's got two Boone and Crockett animals on the ground. And that's what it's all about.